Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of running backs who are hoping for plenty of touches to come their way. It's the Buccaneers going up against the Vikings. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage takes us to one of the newest jewels on the NFL landscape, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. The children will groan. It's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. The former Oklahoma Sooner will be leading the charge in his eighth season now under center Sam Bradford. I know he doesn't move around the same way as he did as a youngster because of all the knee injuries, but he's always been a natural athlete. Coming out of high school, a lot of people thought he could play Division I college basketball. Other people have told me, no matter what the sport, if he's never played it before, he'll pick it up and be proficient right out of the gate. The kind of guy that absolutely drives you crazy, even if he's your friend. I was just going to say, beat you at ping pong, <laughs> beat you at foosball, beat no you at golf. What. Yeah, drives you crazy. Now a play fake here on first down. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. It's lining up first and ten. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Well, let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. Minnesota had a very optimistic vision of what they would do on offense in 2016. But a couple of key injuries altered that landscape. Running back Adrian Peterson and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. That led to them scrambling throughout the season to try and fit together their offense, try to put the running game and a new passing game together. And instead of having a big year, they finished 28th overall in total offense. The play fake to Murray. Now it's Bradford. Looking middle. It's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And it's third down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. When Gerald McCoy entered the NFL, he was part of a huge debate around the league. Gerald McCoy or Ndamukong Sue? Who would be the better defensive tackle? They both had more than their share of moments. And what's made Gerald McCoy a perennial Pro Bowl player, his ability to play just about anywhere on the defensive line but especially to work over the centers and guards in order to create havoc in the pocket. They go play action. Now Bradford. And this is going to be incomplete. 
Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Ryan Quigley, fifth-year man from Boston College, in to punt it away. Adam Humphreys deep for Tampa Bay. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. Tough starting field position here. They go play action here on first down. And his throw is incomplete. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Jameis to throw it. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's got Evans. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. For young quarterbacks, having that primary target's a big deal, and Mike Evans serves as that for Jameis Winston. Evans led the league in targets in 2016. Yeah, went after him a ton. He also was six in catches, fourth in yards, and tied for second in touchdowns. And played in his first Pro Bowl. Is they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's key, but also can cover deep as well. Sims and brought down but not before reaching the 45 yard line that one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks that O line they cleared a big hole there on that run the athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve and we're seeing it here not only they're controlling things right at the line of scrimmage but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels you know get to linebacker spot the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Right. 
Jameis now on first down. And a catch right side by Evans. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? So the offense has it first and ten. Winston. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Second down, Winston. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. They get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age. But then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football. And getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. Winston from the gun on third down. And that is incomplete. My dad used to tell me all the time when you're going ready to play a big time game, especially when you have one going into a dome setting, better strap it up tight because that crowd can really affect things. Especially on third downs like the one we just saw there with the incompletion. That's running out of steam and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. So after the missed long field goal attempt, this offense set up nicely at the 44-yard line. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Part I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They go with Murray again. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football.
Now it's a bootleg with Bradford. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Bradford finding Rudolph there for a Viking first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first down, Murray. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. Now a second down throw for Bradford toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, Bradford. And Rudolph has it left side. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Back to the ground game. Here's Murray. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. That was second down run for Murray. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. In search of eight yards on third down, they've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Bradford to throw it. Is going to be incomplete. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. will put this one through and the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead so in the end they had the ball for 10 plays but the drive only yields 3 points yeah they were able to move the football but the defense stiffened once their backs went to the end zone and they were able to hold them to just 3 Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. A first down throw for Winston. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. second and ten a dump off to Sims it'll be a gain of nine and that is going to set up a third and one I know most of the time when the ball's in the air you're thinking wide receiver tight end but running backs they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays and the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third playing coverage here Now Sims, and he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like his focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. The play fake to Sims. Now Winston. Over the middle to Evans. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there, a 22. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. And now a first down following that long game. Now they run with Sims. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. Second down and just one. They'll run it again with Sims. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. 
I think he likes natural light best. And here comes play number six on this drive. The first carry here for Jaquiz Rogers. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They'll try to throw now, Winston. That's complete, middle of the field to Humphreys. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. The reception good for seven, it's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Bucks in possession of the football as we begin the second quarter. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. They're still in search of the first down after that last completion. On third and one, here's Winston. Complete, he finds Bray. And he gets the first down yardage he needs before he's brought down at the six. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. When we talk about Harvard, you know we're going to talk about academics. But in this case, let's talk about a big year Cameron Braid had in 2016, the tight end. Finished with 57 catches, 660 yards, and also eight scores. way forward here for a modest game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Toss play to Sims. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And this offense on third down today, they've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and goal. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. So backed up to the six now, third and goal. From the gun, Winston. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Cameron Bray from six yards away. And the Bucs are able to strike for six. Yeah, he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. Oh, 
So he missed his lone field goal try, but he's got this one as that extends their lead. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe <-bashed. laughs> I don't know about toe -bashed. that. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. They go back to Murray on first down. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Play fake to Murray. Now Bradford looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. It's Justin Evans, the rookie from Texas A&M. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. there maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. Well he's looking for some running room and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down throw for Winston. Blitz coming and down he goes. 
These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. To throw, Winston. And the pressure gets to him again. Linval Joseph in there to drop him and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Now the six-year man from Cal, Brian Anger, on to kick. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Sam Bradford heading back out as he and his offense get ready to go again. I think this crowd not really sure what to make of things. You know, their, their guys have not looked very good. Their leader here at the top, he hasn't looked that great either. And most of the time you hear guys talk about how they don't let the crowd affect them or they block it off. Well, that's not really fully true because a lot of the times you ride the wave of emotion with a crowd when it's positive for you. In this case, they've got to find a way to shake it off and at least get something done to maybe put the crowd back on their side. Absolutely. Give these guys something to cheer about. A toss to Murray. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Second down, Bradford. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The Vikings on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. the shotgun it's Bradford it's caught by Treadwell and he gets this down deep into Tampa Bay territory a big play for the Vikings on third down 57 yards coaches really don't care from what position they get this but run after the catch ability rack ability is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. match the person is on his heels and absorbing blows is having a tough time and that's what's happening to the defense right now because the offense is on his toes and punching and there was another first down run right there The 
He'll try to run it in with Murray. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They'll run for it with Cook. And now running right through it. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick. Throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. Third and goal, Bradford. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Stephon Diggs from four yards out. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. An out route there for the score, a quick out route there for the score. Yeah, you're not really serving the defense on this one. You're just counting on timing, making this play happen. One, two, balls out of his hands. Knows where he's going, just puts it to the outside. Touchdown. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Forbath out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And he'll take it out to the 25. A look at Jameis Winston now as he gears up to lead this offense again. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident continue to try and up his game but just let him know hey if I'm around if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football just follow me we'll get there sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else see if he has that confidence now a play fake here on first down oh that was dangerous throw it into coverage almost picked but instead, they'll keep it on second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Ten yards still left on second down. They'll run here with Sims. And it work his way across the 30 to the 32. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Bucks on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time it's third and three. Working out of the gun. Winston. He finds Humphreys. Winston and Humphreys connecting there for a Tampa Bay first down. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. 
He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Jameis now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. And he'll give it here to his running back. Room to run past midfield. The 30. And he makes it all the way down to the 19. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 44 yards. another first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Winston. And he's got his tight end, Howard. It's a Buccaneer touchdown. O.J. Howard from four yards out. And the Bucs are able to strike for six. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. The point after now for Aguayo. And that makes it 14-10. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. This is fielded at the goal line. And some room to work. And he'll return this one all the way out of the other side of the field. Now that's the kind of return that warms the heart of a special teams coach. He'll be pushing us next time, Brandon, to make sure his guys are introduced in the starting lineups. These guys have such an influence on every game. The unsung heroes, remember, they have their own meetings, their own practice time, heck, their own spot on the bench in order to be ready to play each and every week. And now we're circling here around the two-minute warning. This is a setup play, trying to get one last one in before the clock warning. Bradford now to throw on first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. 
And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. So we've got a second and five. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. In just two minutes time, don't forget we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. Second down to the offense, needing five yards. Working out of the gun, Bradford. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. The Vikings on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. Now the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And he'll be well short of a first down as he stopped again right at the line of scrimmage. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Fourth down, Bradford. And my goodness, this is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen Hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Winston now to throw on first down. Looking left, sideline, incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. And on second and ten now. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And his throw here is incomplete. The tight end, Cameron Brait, was the target. Third down here. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. If you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. On third down, it's Rodgers, and he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. There's seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. 
And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Bradford going to give it to Murray. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Second down following the run. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. So here we go, first and ten now. From the gun, Bradford. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away and it's second down. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Offense still needing 10 yards. Second down. To throw again. Bradford. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The Vikings on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun, Bradford. And it's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And 
And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. Ground the drive starts with Sims. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Vikings trail right now, but with another half to play, there's time to turn it around. The Buccaneers deserve to be ahead, but we'll need to put together another strong half. Here we go. Let's do this. Here's your first half highlights. Bucks with it now early in the second. Winston to the air as he completes this to his tight end, Cameron Wright. And he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The Buccaneers go up by four. About halfway through the second, Bradford's on point with the throw, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 18-yard line. Vikings later on the drive. It's Sam Bradford connecting with Stephon Diggs, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. That puts them up by a field goal. Now to late in the first half. Jameis to his rookie tight end from Alabama, big O.J. Howard. And it's caught for the score. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> Spins past him. He's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. at each other right away we knew that flag was coming out and i always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you i don't want to throw the flag but you caused the play you did it i had to time to the tailback fighting room at the 30 through an opening and there he goes and they do finally get him but he makes it all the way to the six a big play that time for Tampa Bay 76 yards so you got the lead here in the second half. Obviously, you love big runs like that at any time. Here, you really like them. And how about the confidence that's being exhibited by that offense now? They don't care what you're lining up doing on the defensive side. They want the big fella to carry the football and carry it often. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Throwing Winston. 
And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. Jameis on second down. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Deshaun Jackson from six yards away. And the Bucs are going to add on to their lead. And if you blinked, you probably missed that touchdown drive. It happened in a hurry. I was just putting mustard on my hot dog, and all of a sudden, he's in the end zone. I've got to do a better job of paying attention with this quick strike offense. I thought you were going to tell your wife about the hot dogs in the booth thing. I just did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. You did. Aguayo on for the PAT. It's good, and it's 21-10. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. The kicker, Roberto Aguayo, has it teed up and is about ready to get this one started. That's fielded in the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. They'll try and get the running game going here with Murray. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Again, it's Murray. <laughs> and they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Well, how many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. Bradford with a give to Murray. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. They'll try to throw now. Bradford. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 14 yards that time for number 14. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Oh, 
A first down throw for Bradford. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. It's Murray again. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here's Murray. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. Murray. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave them with a third and 11. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. On third down, Bradford. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. here on first down and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Gerald McCoy coming up the middle gets him there for a loss of about nine Gerald McCoy's game just translates no matter who is calling the defenses and what defense he lines up in inside outside his ability to rush the passers is just significant for Tampa Bay Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Now a second down throw for Bradford. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. You talk about a combo that works really well. Sam Bradford, short, dark-throwing quarterback, and Kyle Rudolph able to work the seams inside and make those tough catches. Now, Rudolph wound up shattering his career high with 83 catches last year, third among NFL tight ends. Third and long for Bradford. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it.
And Forbath will put this one through. And that'll make this an eight-point game. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvage three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. On the return, it's Ryan Smith. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. begins here with Sims again the juke and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line he goes for 18 there as the drive will continue and this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs he's getting past the point of attack and guess what he's doing forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles And his throw is going to be incomplete. Second down throw for Winston. <laughs> Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. And even 40 yards. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a handoff here to his running back. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. Partner, I think there's a lesson there. Some days you're just having a really tough time, and for the defense, today has been that day. But after that play, what do you learn? You can still make plays even when the other guy's having success against you. And the offense will be looking to get at least some of this yardage back here. It's second and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. 
Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Well, that was better than the first go around when he lost yardage, but still nothing there, and that sets up a third and long. Tough spot here. Put it mildly. Sometimes I wonder if some of that old school football should come back into play. You know what I would think here? Quick kick. Try and change field position, help out your team. And this one is incomplete. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Roberto Aguayo out now for the Buccaneer field goal try. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Aguayo able to knock it through. And that will bump the lead up to 11. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. You got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal, set now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Sam Bradford now, along with the Vikings, O, heading back out there. How do you think he personally is evaluating his game so far? He was pretty good in the first half, been good so far here in the third quarter. He's got to like it, right? Not looking for the dramatics here. Not trying to set the world on fire in terms of stats. It's almost like you're driving. Hands at 10 and 2. Alert for anything <laughs> out there. Watching for trouble on the road. And making sure you get the team home. The bus driver. See if he can drive the bus here again on this drive. First down, Bradford. And down he goes. A Buccaneer sack. Chris Baker busting through to get him for a loss of six. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Second down, Bradford going with a screen for Murray. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Call it a loss of two on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying it is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize that it's broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Throwing on third and long. Bradford. And that is incomplete. No second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Ryan Quigley now, standing just outside his own goal line. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Pulled in at the 24. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Jameis Winston and company heading back onto the field now. He's been a good game manager. They're winning here in the third quarter, but really the ground game is where it's been at for them, hasn't it? 
So whatever the game plan was, you just got to focus on continuing to run the football. And really, that takes the pressure off of the guy throwing it around. Doesn't have to be the focal point. Hand it off. Let him chew up the yardage in big plays. And your team's winning. The only people upset, the fantasy guys that may have started him at quarterback <laughs> in their leagues. And we'll see if they continue with a recipe of the ground game. First down, Winston. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. Second down following the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down at the 32-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. 4C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. On third down, Winston. He's got Evans. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Bucks. They've got the football. They also are in front here on the scoreboard as we start the fourth. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to take it down to about the 35 here. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now they'll run on the draw. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives them a new set of downs. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now a play fake here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down, Charles Sims, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage. I really liked what he did there. The Bucks on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and nine. Ready. Ready. Working out of the gun, Winston. Ready. 
And this is going to be incomplete. Roberto Aguayo out now for the Buccaneer field goal try. From the right hash, this from 48. will even nope it doesn't even get there well short and this score will stay right where it is well and it's still a good size lead so they haven't necessarily needed him but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far yeah and the question now is will he be prepared when they do need it whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative and out now come the vikings and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Bradford on first down. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Throwing again, Bradford on second and 10. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. You gotta give some credit there, able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. The Vikings on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 10. From the shotgun, it's Bradford. A dump down to McKenna. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. They're going to run it with Murray. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. Latavius Murray unable to lower those shoulders and get the first. And the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So out come the Bucks now. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Jameis now on first down. His throw incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. From the gun, Winston. And his throw is incomplete.
The Bucks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and ten. Jameis to throw it. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Sam Bradford heading back out as he and his offense get ready to go again. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up and they tend to play well. Bradford now to throw on first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. First and ten, Bradford. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Second down. The throw left side complete to Treadwell. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. down throw for Bradford and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Levante David charging hard for that outside linebacker spot he gets in to drop him for a loss of 12 he was trying to keep his eyes downfield nobody came open he's trying to do everything that he had been taught right every bit of the technique but if no one's open there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked to throw on second down. Bradford, and his throw is going to be incomplete. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Let's get off the field. 
from the gun, Bradford. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Robert Ayers coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fielded at the 20. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. handoff to start the drive to Sims and he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43 nine yards is the pick up there and they'll have a second and one Brandon's is all about pace and tempo now for them they've got the advantage so I'm gonna put musical terms for you you don't want to go prestissimo that's too quick too lively right but you also don't want to slow it down too much you don't want to go lento what you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady, get those gains, and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> <laughs> now Winston. That's complete. Middle of the field to Humphreys. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They go play action here on first down. Going up top. Oh, wide open, complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. A gain of 39 that time. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Red zone opportunity. The play fake to Sims. Now Winston. And he fends him off. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he lost six there on the first down play.
And to give this time to the tailback. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let him know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. That's complete right around the eight. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch. However, it's fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And Aguayo's kick is good. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give them some breathing room and lets them build up a little cushion. Roberto Aguayo following the made field goal, set now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Murray. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. down. Bradford keeps himself upright. Fighting through. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he's taken down but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. 
They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Throwing on first down, Bradford. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And it's second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Throwing again, Bradford. And his pass incomplete. So a third and ten, and defensively, a dime look, six DBs. Again, it's Bradford. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Now, before they run this fourth down play, we're going to get a timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. this fourth and long and they're going to go for it got to try it here he's back to throw now a desperation throw deep downfield and no it's incomplete they had to go for it with such little time remaining and the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back so with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the oldest pressure about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. And the Vikings defense ready to head back out there now. And they did well down near the goal line last time, forcing him to settle for a short field goal. And in today's day and age, settling for a field goal of that distance is amazing. You can get three points now, where it's going to give you only one point for the extra point, which would be a little bit longer. But they have to feel fantastic about only giving up three in that situation. It could have been so much worse. Yeah, it could have. Now can they carry that over? And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment, the defense. They'll step off the five Still yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. running back and able to push his way forward here for a good little game and another timeout called by the Vikings now that'll be their second so one more chance to stop the clock here and we'll be back
Again, they run with Sims. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. And he'll give it here to his running back. Flashy little move, but unable to reach the 40. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Winston will kneel down, and that should be your ball game. Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.